Welcome to our service here at St. Rafos. I am the rector of this church and my name is Helen Vancouvering and we welcome all of you from wherever you're listening and especially of the members of this church. Today is Trinity Sunday so we start with this. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbour. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and, and to the Son, and to the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, come, let us adore him. And we say together the Jubilati, Psalm 100. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. We have a reading from the Old Testament, from Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, 
and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning, the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good and there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it, God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Here ends the lesson. Thanks be to God. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order, listen to my appeal, agree with one another, live in peace. 
and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of the Lord according to Matthew. Praise to you Lord Christ. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him they worshipped him but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. One of the psalms appointed for today was Psalm 8. Listen to this translation. O oh love, my beloved, how powerful is your name in all the earth. When I look up at the heavens, at the work of love's creation, at the infinite variety of your plan, what is woman that you rejoice in her, and man that you do delight in him? You have made us in your image. You fill us with your love. You have made us co-creators of the earth. O oh love, my beloved, how powerful is your name in all the earth. And yet in the last few weeks and certainly last few days, it seems more appropriate to listen to the breathless cries of a, a woman Sojourner Truth, who was freed from slavery in 1826. O oh Lord, O oh Lord, O oh the tears and the groans and the moans, O oh Lord. Breathless cries. And aren't we all beginning to feel a bit breathless under the weight of a health pandemic? and staying safe at home, racial protests rising up from the deaths of George and Breonna and Armwood, even as the beautiful days draw in outside and make us want to go outside, and the unemployment and the broken plans and hopes, the insecurity and injustices, and the polarized, exhausting politics. We need this season of Pentecost. Our world needs this season of Pentecost. We need the reminders that come in this season of Pentecost of the transformative power of a God who is on the move in the here and now, a God who is in solidarity with us and with our neighbors, everyone, wherever they live. 
and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit that is with us all, always, as we hear in Corinthians today. This Trinity Sunday, this year, we need the reminder that the wildest Christian discovery of God as triune originated not in ivory towers, but in deep and dirty, beautiful and real human experience. Human encounters with a God who shows up in, among, and always for everybody. Everybody. A God who does not and will not remain far off. A God offering human dignity and respect, overflowing love to the whole world, revealed to us in God's depth of trust and height of hope in humanity, in us, in his image bearers. And that is a love and a trust and a hope that God committed to be among those who live with dignity denied, love withheld, and communities deprived of mercy, love, and breath. Communities needing to be rebuilt. Trinitarian understanding speaks to God's love in action that is drawing us into the same love in action. The Acts readings that we heard through the Easter season and now today in Matthew 28 point us towards the Apostles' experience of the Holy Spirit as nothing less than the enduring and holy presence of Jesus, continuing to incarnate, be with us as flesh and blood in us and through us, God's promise for all and succinctly said in that last part, I am with you always to the end of the age because through the Spirit, Jesus remains with us. It is Jesus forever with us that makes sense of God as Trinitarian. Yes, every faith, all faiths and none experience the holy with them in their lives and within the created world, whether their eyes are open to it or not. But God is with us all. Christian faith discovers God's presence through Jesus Christ and in the solidarity that he expresses, a solidarity lived out, incarnated, through his life, death, and new life, with all who are oppressed, with all who are living fine, with all who are rejected members anywhere in this world, but members of the human family then and now. And he is with us through his spirit with us, as we then remember, we then incarnate his life together. Knowing that the God who is forever here is here and now. Christ-based solidarity is not like identity politics where you pick a side, one side or the other, one side endorsed in their opinion, their belief, confronting the other. Trinitarian theology calls us to confess faith in a holy, self-giving God with us, called at Christmas Emmanuel. God with us, who is calling each of us everywhere to repentance and humility calls each of us to the gaps in our lives, those gaps both in the vertical relationship with God and our horizontal relationships with all our neighbours in this world. I know that many of you have already been to London and know the, the London tubes that go there and that voice that says to you when you step from the safety of the platform into the safety of the train, mind the gap. 
step over there, don't fall in that gap, don't ignore the gap, that would be dangerous. But step. So I'm using that mind the gap now. Mind, be mindful of the gaps that we each have in our own lives, the gaps that are made by sin and by pride. Don't step over that gap, attend to it transform the gap. With Jesus' promise to be always with us, take that into your awareness of the gaps in your own life. The things you don't understand and the things that you do and haven't yet done in the situations that we find ourselves in today. Remembering that the good news is that God is with us always and that God's mercy, justice, grace and compassion is applied equally to every human being. What is needed is God's forgiveness for those gaps in myself where I am not living that good news as completely as the breath of the Spirit makes me able. Hear it again, Jesus said, I am with you always. That's not in the sense of, I'll follow you where you lead, or kind of, Jesus is my boyfriend, romantic love, or you've got this, Helen, self-assurance, you can do this on your own, but rather as an invitation to risk moving forward in prayer and in action towards the gaps between who I am and who God is and between what I learn about others and our hope together for the world. All those gaps are to be filled by the love and life incarnate of God always with us by the power of the Spirit. You see, the Trinitarian understanding helps us understand how God is with us through Jesus and then we are in the world through the Spirit. Paul suggests ways to fill the gaps and I give them to you again now in, from 2 Corinthians 13. He says, aim for perfection. Listen. Be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet each other with a holy kiss, which reminds me of Psalm 85, which talks about steadfast love and faithfulness will meet when we live to what God has asked us to live, has created us to live. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other, it says in Psalm 85. And then again, I have a book that I'm reading uh, right now of poetry by John Donahue, and he talks about blessing the space between us. Take God's blessing, take the blessing that you know of life into the space between us, our neighbours, ourselves, our families. Bring the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit that you know, that you have encountered that roots you in your faith and trust of God. Bring that to the gaps that are formed by brokenness and unknownness, the gaps between where we all are and where God calls us to be, and take responsibility to shape your love's response, our love's response, to fill and bless the gaps between us and our God, between us and our neighbours, here and now and always. 
May the presence of God with us, suffering with us, pull us together. May Christ, who surrendered his life to be among us, the breathless, the struggling, the hungry, the thirsty, may he show us his hope for our future. And may we see the power and the love of the Spirit transform and bless the gaps in all of our lives and bring heaven to earth. Let us say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator, creator of heaven, heaven and, and earth. earth. I, I believe, believe in Jesus Christ, Christ his, his only Son, our Lord. Lord. He, he was, was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Mary. He, he suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was, was crucified, crucified, died, and was buried. buried. He, he descended to the dead. dead. On, On the third day, day he rose again. again. He, he ascended into heaven. heaven and is seated, seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we say together, suffrages be. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them, now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. And a collect for today. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us your servants grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father who with the Son and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A collect for Sundays. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favour through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Grant, O God, that your holy and life-giving Spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatreds cease, that our divisions being healed we may live in justice and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, our Heavenly Father, you have blessed us and given us dominion over all the earth. Increase our reverence before the mystery of life and give us new insight into your purposes for the human race and new wisdom and determination in making provision for its future in accordance with your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, 
To know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you, for the honour of your name. Amen. Amen. And we pray for those in our own church, in our own community, that we have on our long-term prayer list. We pray for Terry and Jack and Art and Sonia and Don and Gail. We pray for Virginia and Lee. We pray for Rose. We pray for Karen. We pray for James and Hilda. We pray for Martha Helen and Al. We pray for Pat Dinsmore. We pray for Janice's friend. We pray for Paul, Mike, Roy, Susan and Linda. We pray for Margaret's friend. And we remember all those again who have lost their lives in recent troubles here. And we remember the families of Ahmad, Brianna, Brianna and George. May they rest in peace and their families know your loving embrace. Amen. And then we say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, we your unworthy, unworthy servants, servants give, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honour and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.